You have a story. A story that is unique. A story that needs to be heard. A story that people care about. So it can get them to stand up for what they believe in. It can inspire them to change. It can inspire them to take action. It can inspire them to care. Care enough to be the light to someone's darkness. Care enough to extend a helping hand to someone who's down and out. Care enough to call things the way they are and see them for what they could be. Your story can make a difference. Your story can save a life. Your story matters. One story changed the entire world. Your story could do the same. All you've got to do is own your story. Did you like the story we just told you? We created this video sometime last year when we wanted to express how strongly we felt about storytelling and how it forms the backbone of why we do what we do. And we thought it was a great example to illustrate how important storytelling can be in your videos and how it can impact the viewer's experience. Because in today's video, we're gonna be sharing with you a storytelling structure that you can apply to your videos to instantly help you tell better stories. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start with the very building blocks. Every great story is traditionally made up of five components. You might remember looking at plot diagrams in school. These can actually come super in handy when you're creating videos. In case you don't remember, let's go ahead and go over the components of a story. The first part of your story is the exposition, where you establish the setting of the whole story. So in a movie, this is where you get introduced to the town where the movie is gonna take place and the main characters, etc. Next, you have your rising action. This is where the conflict gets introduced and starts kind of building up. In your classic fairy tale, this might be something like a dragon coming to attack the kingdom. And then you have the climax, which is basically the height of the conflict, the most exciting part of the story when everything has ramped up. So now you have the prince fighting the dragon. Maybe it looks like the dragon is gonna win. Eventually the prince slays the dragon, which brings us to falling action, when things start to calm down and you introduce a solution to the problem. So the dragon has been slain, the princess has been saved, things are looking better now. And finally, at the end, you have your resolution. When the problem has been solved and the conflict is over, in your fairy tale, this is usually a wedding. So that's the overview of your classic story structure. Now let's take a look at how you can apply it to your videos. When you're creating videos for social media or for the web, we're actually gonna add two more components to our plot diagram. First, before everything else, we're gonna add a hook, which is where you capture the audience's attention. And then at the end, we're gonna add in a call to action. So this is where you lead your audience to visit your website or check out a product, join your email list, whatever it is. Okay, so every movie or video you can think of is made up of all of these parts or most of these parts. It's kind of the master of the universe of storytelling. So let's go ahead and look at all these components in more detail. Let's start with the hook. You know how sometimes a video will begin with a really exciting part of the video and then it cuts off and goes to the channel intro? That's a perfect example of a hook. You've got our attention, we know we're gonna revisit that moment later on in the video and we wanna see what happens. Check out this example from Peter McKinnon's channel. He builds anticipation but then leaves you on a cliffhanger. So you're super interested in watching the rest of the video because you know you're gonna get an answer to that question that he left you on. All right, here's the story about Ford. Here is the truth when it comes to the Ford Motor Company. To another level. So a few common ways that you can use a hook in your video. You can create a cliffhanger like we've been talking about. You can start with a question. Our brains are wired to want to answer a question when we hear one. So if you put a question right at the beginning of your video, your audience is going to be trying to answer it in their head, which will kind of bring them into your video. You can start with one really interesting line or fact that's going to make the audience interested in seeing the rest. Or you can start by letting your audience know that you're about to share some highly coveted information. For example, if you start your video by saying, I'm about to show you how you can make a million dollars, you will capture people's attention. <laughs> All right, so once you have your hook in place, that brings us to the exposition, which is you setting up the story. In a vlog, it's usually you talking to the camera, explaining what you're gonna do that day. In an interview, you might introduce the guest and what they do and why you decided to interview them. In an ad, let's say you're doing an ad for a home decor product, the exposition might simply be a few shots of a home environment, just so we know that the story is gonna take place in that setting. 
The exposition is super important because it brings the audience into the story, but for a web video, it can be fairly quick. And once you've set the context of your story, it's time to move on to the next component, which is rising action. So this is the introduction of the tension in the story that's later going to be resolved. If you don't have some kind of meaningful conflict in your story, you really don't have a story at all. Let me go over a few examples to show you what I mean. Let's take a look at two movies and see what happens when you take the conflict away. I tried to pick two popular movies that hopefully we've all seen. If not, spoiler alert. So, Titanic. The main conflict is obviously the ship sinking. There's also the conflict of this love story between two people of two different classes. So let's take all the conflict away. Let's say Jack and Rose meet. Jack is also a member of the upper class. Rose isn't engaged or anything like that. And the ship doesn't sink, it just keeps sailing. They arrive in America and that's the end of the story. Not much of a story at all, right? <laughs> let's look at Back to the Future. So the conflict is that Marty needs to get back to the future, but he can't. He accidentally messes up his parents' relationship, all that. If you take the conflict out, Marty travels back in time in the time machine and then he goes back. That's it. <laughs> As you can see, if you take the conflict out of a story, there really is no story. So how do you add conflict to your videos, given that you're not trying to create a movie or anything like that? Let's take a look at vlogs, for example. Have you ever wondered why you love some vlogs and other vlogs just feel kind of boring? Just like with movies, if you're vlogging, you want to have some kind of meaningful conflict that happens. Now, in a vlog, this is going to be more everyday type of conflicts, like you're deciding on a new laptop, your computer crashed in the middle of your work, you ran out of coffee that morning, your dog tore up the pillows, whatever it is. If there's at least one meaningful event that brings tension into your video, that keeps your audience glued to the video. They want to see how the conflict is going to get resolved. Another example would be an ad for a product. The conflict here is whatever problem your audience is facing that your product is going to solve. So this can be pretty simple. Let's say your product is running shoes. In this case, the problem that the subject is facing might be that they get done with a run and their feet are hurting because they don't have supportive shoes. So think about what the conflict can be in your video and you're going to line that up after the exposition. All right, so now you have a setting and you've introduced a conflict. Next, you have your climax, which is basically the height of the conflict, the defining moment that leads to the beginning of the resolution. So the climax of a movie, the Titanic is sinking, Marty is trying to get back to the future, but Doc needs to reconnect the wires. In your vlog, your computer crashed and you can't get your work done. Maybe you're making a room redo video. In this case, maybe you realize that you hate the color of paint you originally picked. In our running shoes ad, the runner might be in the middle of a race and they're falling behind because they don't have good shoes. All right, you've had your climax moment. Now you're gonna lead the audience to the resolution, which concludes the story. So the falling action and the resolution, we can basically group together, especially for shorter videos. This is the part of the story where the problem gets solved. For example, in the case of an ad, you introduce your product and show how it solves the problem. The runner now has better running shoes that helps them win the race. In a how-to video, this can be the part where you start showing the steps that are gonna lead to the final goal. In our room redo video, you went back to the store, bought a new paint color, and you love the new color. And finally, that leads us to the call to action, which is where you tell the audience how they can attain this resolution for themselves. So this is the part where you direct them to the website, where they can buy their own pair of running shoes, or for a room redo video, you tell them, be sure to plan out your room makeover so you don't make the same mistake I did, and then you can tell them to sign up for your email list so they can get a free copy of your room redo planning guide. <laughs> now that you know the foundation for good storytelling, the thing you're gonna wanna pay attention to is the constraints that you have in the videos you're making. For example, time constraints. In a vlog, for example, you can pretty much follow all of these steps, but in a Facebook ad or a how-to video on YouTube, you don't have the luxury of having so much time. So in this case, your exposition might need to be really quick, or maybe you don't need it at all and you can jump straight into the conflict. Basically, just know that every video you're making is gonna be a little bit different, so the structure might look a little bit different each time, but this is the general storytelling structure that you can try to keep in mind. And there you have it. That is a rock solid framework you can use to build better stories in your videos. If you did find value in this video, be sure to give it a like and let us know in the comments below what kind of videos you make that you're most excited to try this structure with. And if you're new to video creation, I would highly recommend that you check out our playlist on Filmmaker Fundamentals where you can find more super useful tips and tutorials. I'm Teresa with NVIDIO and I will see you in the next one.